Okay, so today we're going to do area under a curve. Well, we're going to approximate the area under a curve um, by a rectangular approximation method. This is actually a review of something that you did in pre-calc. So you may be familiar with the three different types that we went over for um, the rectangular approximation method. That is LRAM, when you use your left endpoint, RAM when you use your right endpoint, or MRAM, when you use the midpoint. So let's just get started with this slide. It says that area under a curve may be approximated um, by drawing inscribed or circumscribed rectangles. Um, it says and or because sometimes when we start doing the left endpoint, they're all inscribed or all circumscribed or as your function increases and decreases, it's inscribed and then circumscribed. So any of those methods, RAM, MRAM, um, you're going to find that it may vary depending on your function itself. All right, so we draw this out and we partition the area into a certain number of rectangles, and then we find the sum of the area of the rectangles. So usually with this method, the width of each rectangle is the same. Um, that's delta x sub i, or whatever letter you're going to use to represent an individual, and that's why it would be i, uh, rectangle. But it could be i, j, k, etc. So there's a note here at the bottom that the greater the number of rectangles, the better the approximation of the area under the curve. So that is correct. Um, it's better to have, let's say, 10 rectangles than four. It's better to have like 1,000 rectangles. Um, that isn't something you really want to draw out, though. So I have a procedure of what to do, so let's get to it. OK, so in number one, we're partitioning the interval from x equals a to x equals b. Sometimes we're given the interval from a to b, it'd be a closed interval, because um, we need to find the area. So it has to be from one closed point, point to another. Can't be from hole to hole. Um, into n amount of rectangles of equal width. So once again, we're talking about, yes, we're actually creating of equal width. Now, sometimes on the AP exam, they may give it a table of values, and you'll notice that the width, it may not be the same as you go through these problems. Um, if that's the case and you had to, like, draw it out, then do indeed, like, draw it out um, as your first point and then your second point, your third point, and draw in the rectangles as you can. Um, even though they're, they're going to look a little bit funky, especially this last one at the end, this is going to be so much wider than all of the others, Okay, as you can kind of see. Um, so if we're setting up the size of the rectangle, you see how it applies to form a rectangle. I didn't decide LRAM or RM or MRAM yet. That determines the height, and that brings us to number two. Two says determine the endpoints or midpoints and the height with the function f of x. I'm going to make a table and a graph. So um, usually you stick with one method. You're not going to have multiple different methods within an interval in one problem. Okay. Um, three, set up the notation if necessary. Okay, so a lot of times when we actually have to draw this out, um, we start out with just the notation of what we have for B minus A over N, like this is A, and this is A plus that, and so on. Uh, you wouldn't have unequal amounts. So if we get a chance, we'll get to that. And four, determine the answer. So find the area of each rectangle, you know, base times height or length times width, and then just add them up. If and only if the width is the same, so not like this, you can factor it out and then just add up all the heights. But once again, if this is the case, then find the areas of each. So um, let's look at an example. Or let's look at both the example and the practice problems while we're at it. 
Um, I couldn't kind of cut it in half, so here it is. All right, let's do the example problem together. So that means it should be in your notebook too. You can always pause the video, make sure you get your notes in. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with delta x sub, it could be i, it could be j. I'm gonna stick with i for now. And b minus a, so that would be five minus zero over n. So I made n4, so this may look like a previous problem we did when we reviewed or did it in pre-calc, but I changed the width of each rectangle, okay? So now, um, from here, what I like to do um, is to actually graph it, but to graph it, I need a good table of values, okay? I should have probably moved this table over a little bit more so I have enough space. Okay, so we're starting from A, we're gonna get to B, and if we plug in zero, which is A, we're getting zero. Now, if the width of the rectangle is 5 fourths, then I'm actually adding 1.25, so that's a good addition problem. If I plug this into my function, um, I'm getting 1.5625. Yes, my calculator kind of helped me there. Um, next, 2.5 would be my next x value, and 6.25, this isn't bad to calculate, for my y value. Next x value is 3.75. My calculator came in handy here. 14.0625 was the exact value. And I did run out of space. That's okay. So my last one when f of x was 5, I'm sorry, when x was 5, f of 5 was 25. Okay? So um, now, if you're doing different methods, the graph would look differently for each one, okay? Now, usually when I see values for y like this, I try to figure out, well, what's the best value I could go up by on my y-axis? So basically, you want to have um, a good value to go up by, and I think 5 would be good. And... The increment that you go up by on your axes can be different. So um, I don't necessarily need to have these particular x values, although helpful on my x-axis. I can still decide to go up by 1. Just the sides to my rectangles okay, would be about 1.5 okay, or near 6 because it's 6 and a quarter. So I'm going to show you what I drew out for uh, each one, okay? Are you ready? All right, I'm gonna take a picture of what I wrote. Okay, so again, um, we did some of this work here, so it should be in your notebooks. Now, I do want the rest of this into your notebooks. So we did do this, we did the table, and we started talking about the scales for the graphs, the ones that I chose. Now, I just want you to put the graphs in, okay? So the first one I actually have is RAM graphs. Uh, I'm not sure why I started there. <laughs> I must have just went below and did LRAM. I went back to RAM because I usually start LRAM for first, and then RAM, and then MRAM. All right. So you're noticing what I just described, like where the sides of the rectangles are, like one and a quarter. Um, 2.5, and I plot points, okay, 3.75, that's supposed to be closer to 4, that looks better, okay, and the sides of my rectangle there looks horrible, but you know that I cannot draw very well, so always bear with my drawings, and when x is 5. So I actually didn't make the height all the way to the function, but my function was able to draw in because I just connected the points. This one it is because it's RAM. 
this one I, I did do up to that value. Okay, so you can see that I shaded the area on the curve. This is going to come up later in class. Uh, always shade the area under the curve, not the rectangles, okay, because that's an emphasis on later on when you have to find the exact area under the curve. But you always shade the area that you're finding, okay, not what you're drawing in to find it. Now, the LRAM, you can see that I drew from the left end point over each time. So left to right, left to right, left to right. And so let me erase this though. They were all inscribed, and that's because we have an increasing function. So it's the only time that will happen. Okay, and you can see that the heights of these rectangles aren't as high as the ones, aren't as high as the ones for our RAM. Because in our RAM, we don't use um, the left end point, we use the right end point. So we use from the right end point over for each rectangle. And so that first value for Y is not used for RM, okay, because you're going from the right end point, so you pick the right value and you consistently do that. And LRAM, use the, you don't use the last value, okay, so you don't see that we're adding 25 here. For MRAM, it's completely different, okay? You have to find the midpoint between A and whatever the first value is for your width. So these two values turn out to be 1.25. I divide by two, I find my midpoint. So that's the X value I use to find my Y value. And that's the first height for my rectangle. It's very, very small, so it's a little hard to see but it is there. Now the rest of it, again, you can find the midpoints as I like described, but you can also just keep adding your width. You always add your width from one X value to another. And if you have four rectangles, you only need four values in your table, okay? So these are the Y values you see here. Now, as I said in the previous slide, you can only factor out the width, which is what I did here, if it's the equal width. Otherwise, find the area of each rectangle. So you can see that I wrote an approximate answer for LRAM and RAM. So LRAM, if you look at the graph, would be an underestimate because our rectangles are drawn underneath our curve. Okay. RAM. It's an overestimate because all of them are drawn over our curve. And this one's in the middle. Okay. A lot of times you need to know your curve, you need to know the concavity, and but a lot of times it does vary. It's not always just increasing. Okay, so that means that not always LRAM is gonna be an underestimate and RM is going to be an overestimate. I'm just pointing it out. If you have the graph, you're going to be able to see what's going on. And so that's why I wanted you to take the time and have those scales and have those graphs. And I'm going to ask that you please, please, please pause the video and make sure that you have all of this in your notebook and double check everything that you calculated with mine. Um, even though I wrote this down, didn't have the right answers. I'm trying to erase here, it's not erasing. There we go. So check my values. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm pretty sure everything's right, but um, you may be a little bit lost and that's okay, because I went over everything at once. Um, it may be unfamiliar to you from last year, so just ask some questions before you do the practice. All right, and good luck.